Hi guys, it's Mike again. With another hot summer here in Maryland, I decided it was a good time to try some water flying with my Bixler glider. That's right, I decided to add some floats to my Bixler. I got the idea from a YouTube video that I saw by user Sacco79 and I wanted to see if it could be done. So here's what I did. I bought some GWS floats. I could have made my own floats, but found that GWS makes a set that are just the right size for only $15. In this video, I'll walk you through the build process for the floats, show you how I attach them to the plane, and show you how to add an optional rudder. First, let's put together the GWS floats. They come with written instructions, but there's nothing like a video to show you how to do it. Here are the components that come in the box. You get two plastic float bottoms, two foam float tops, two wire cross beams, four plastic latches, two wood mounts, 12 screws, one piece of silicone tubing, two landing gear wire struts, two additional support wires, one set of decals. Here's what they're going to look like when they're done. Notice how you can just put the floats up into the glider. For each plastic float bottom, carefully cut around this groove around the perimeter. For each float, test fit the foam top into the float bottom. Right and left floats are identical. Apply a continuous stream of 30 minute epoxy to the perimeter of the float top. Don't worry about getting a 100% watertight seal here. We'll come back and add another coat of epoxy. Put the float top and bottom together and secure with masking tape about every couple inches around the perimeter. Wipe the excess glue off with a paper towel. After the epoxy dries, remove the tape for each float. Apply a second coat of 30 minute epoxy around the perimeter. If there is a gap, make sure the epoxy gets in there. Wipe the excess off with a paper towel and allow it to dry. The instructions say to apply the included stickers now, but I think you can wait and apply them later if you want. I decided not to use them. Place the wood mounts on the foam float tops. Use a marker to mark the center of where these rounded areas are. Remove the mounts and drill 1.5 millimeter or 1 16th of an inch holes at these locations. Epoxy the wood mounts to the float tops, making sure the holes line up with the round areas. Install the two wire cross beams in the holes between the floats. Install a plastic latch at each location where the wire goes into the wood. Make sure the strap is centered on the wooden mount. Mark and pre-drill a 1.6 millimeter or 1 16th of an inch hole for the two screws. Install the screws and repeat for the other three straps. Install each side of a strut into a strap. They give you some tubing that you can cut and add to the end of the strut, but I don't think it's necessary. GWS doesn't have this step in their instructions, but I thought it was very helpful for attaching the floats to the Bixler. Put a wire under each strut bend here. Make sure the strut wires are perpendicular with the floats. Notice these wires are too long, so we'll cut the excess off later. We are going to solder the wire together at these joints. Make a note of where the joints are, remove the struts and sand these joints and solder them together. To help these stick together, make sure to use some flux and some 6040 rosin core solder. Also make sure both wires are good and hot before connecting. Don't forget to hold these wires perpendicular when making the connection. Later I wrapped some stranded copper wire around my solder joints and soldered over them to give them extra support. You can put the wires back on the floats. You need to cut two slits in the bottom of the plane to receive the struts. As a rule of thumb, you want the center of your floats to be slightly in front of the CG of your plane. For me, this worked out so that the front slit was 60 millimeters in front of the wing leading edge. The rear slit was 183 millimeters back from the front slit. The slits were about 30 millimeters wide. Make sure to measure these for your own plane. I did not take video of it, but you can leak test your floats in a pool or a tub by pushing them underwater and checking for air bubbles. Reseal with more 30 minute epoxy if needed. The float construction is complete. Optionally, you can add one or two water rudders to your floats. I decided to add a 4.5 gram servo right to the float, but you could add one to both floats if you want. I found out later that a 9 gram servo offered more control and swapped this one out. Steering without a rudder may be difficult, especially in the wind. Here's how I added the rudder. Cut out a rudder out of a used gift card or a plastic room key. 
You can start kind of large and then cut down the size later. Install a control horn on the gift card. I used one similar to what comes on the Bixler. You can also just cut a piece of gift card out into the shape of a control horn and glue that into a slit in the rudder. Attach the rudder to the end of the float using a hinge of your choice. I used Beacon Foam Tack glue. You just apply the glue to the hinge area, pull the control surface away from the hinge, let the glue dry for a few seconds and then push it back. As the glue is drying, make sure you work the hinge back and forth so it doesn't glue in a fixed position. You could also use strapping tape. Optionally, you can paint your rudder, control horns, control rod, and servo. White spray paint helps them blend in well with the floats. Position the servo on the top of the float where you want to use it. Install the servo horn on it. Run the servo wire up one strut and underneath the canopy. Plug a Y servo cable into your rudder channel on the receiver. Connect the air rudder and the water rudder servo cables into the Y. Before gluing the servo, turn on your plane and test the servo movement to make sure it's moving in the correct direction and if necessary, flip the servo over. The air rudder and your water rudder should be moving in the same direction. Use some CA or super glue to carefully water seal the edges and seams around the servo. Don't put any near the gears. Make sure the rudder trim is centered on your radio. Cut a control rod and put a Z-bend in each end. Install the control rod between the control horn and the servo horn. Move the servo until it's positioned so that the rudder is exactly centered. Test the servo again, then while the servo is centered, glue the servo down here. Secure your servo wire to the strut with a zip tie. I also secured the push rod to the rear strut with the zip tie to keep the push rod from bending. The optional rudder is now completed. After doing the installation, there were some things that I learned. I put some reusable zip ties around the fuselage and the floats to help keep them in place. You could also use some Velcro. Taking off from the water isn't so easy. It takes practice. Be sure to check out this article in my video notes. You need a plane with a strong motor and a prop to overcome the surface tension of the water. Make sure you practice taxiing on the water first to see how it sets in the water. You may need to move your float forwards or backwards. If you can't take off immediately, you can still hand launch and try a water landing. Besides the takeoffs being challenging, I found that the Bixler flew well with the floats and landed very gently in the water. These floats should work on similar RC powered glider planes like the Blitz RC Sky Surfer, Multiplex Easy Star, Dynam Hawk Sky, and the AXN Floater. However, for takeoffs, you need to make sure you have sufficient power with a good brushless motor and propeller to overcome the surface tension of the water. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to get reminders for future videos.